In this lesson, we're going to start talking about macros. How to start designing macros, how to build macros, what are the different types of macros. When we are at a point now where we've started, where we've created all the different objects that we need. We've created our tables, which is the foundation for our entire database. We've started creating our queries, which access that data and turn that data into information. We've started working with our forms. And we know that there are different controls that we can put onto those forms. We know that every control or every object that we put on that form consists of or has three things. It has properties, methods, and events. Now, the next step is to start creating macros. And the macros use those methods and events to our advantage. Remember, earlier I mentioned that uh, our environment, the Windows environment, is event-based. Meaning that a program is running, but it's not doing anything until it has some reason to do something for you. That event could be the user clicking on something, double clicking on something, perhaps a timer goes off, perhaps a file gets posted into a folder and that it, it activates that way. These are all different types of events and you as the developer have to start using those events to your advantage and you have to understand them to you so that you can use them effectively. One of the new things that has been added into Access 2007 is the concept of an embedded macro. Back before 2007, when you created a macro, that macro belonged to a file. It was in a file and you would reference that file whenever you needed to. Now what happens is Access, when you create a new macro and you have it assigned to, say, a button control, you can embed it into that button. So now, if you have a close button, and all it does is close a form, you can take that button, copy it, and paste it into another form, and that macro goes with it. It's very handy, and it makes everything very modular. It makes it very nice. In our previous, previous lesson, what we did was we created a query that referenced a control on another form. So instead of the user typing in what, the, what they want to see in the report or from the query, they allow the user to select something from a drop-down list and that value gets used inside the query. Then what we did was we took that query and we used that as the data source for a report. Well now what we want to do is we want to make it so that the user can simply click a button on that form and it will automatically open up the report. So let's take a look at what a macro or how a macro like that would work. I'm going to open up my form and I'm going to go into design view and I'm going to select the button that we're going to use. Now remember, everything on this form is an object. What we want to do is we want to decide when do we want the report to, to be fired? When do we want that report to be shown to the user? Well, we want it to be shown when the user clicks View Report. When they select this button, when they click this button, that's when it's going to open up that particular report. So I'm going to go to the event. Now notice that on the events tab, for this particular button, we've got a series of properties, or I'm sorry, a series of events that we can select from. On click, on got focus, double click, mouse down, key up, key down. These are all different events that you can use to your advantage. The one that we're going to use is click. So I'm going to go over here to the click, and I have a drop down list. Now, we have, if you use a drop-down list, you have what's called an event procedure. We are not going to deal with event procedures right now. Event procedures are where you're actually writing code. You're actually writing Visual Basic for Applications code, or VBA code. We're not going to be writing VBA code. What we want to do is we want to use the macro language. So instead, I'm going to click the button with the three dots. When I select that, it opens up a dialog box and it says, how do you want to use this? What do you want this button to use? Do we want to use the macro builder? Do we want to use the expression builder or the code builder? We're going to use the macro builder, so we're going to click OK. And it puts us into the macro environment. Macros are all linear, meaning that they go from top to bottom in order. So it's all sequential, boom, 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 boom. Step one, step two, step three. When we look at this, we have our design tab. We can run a macro. So sometimes some macros you can write 
and they will physically perform some function and we can run them at any time. You can do a single step, you can insert rows, delete rows, you can have macro names, you can create conditional macros. We have arguments, you can save and close. Now we're going to create a very simple macro. The first macro that we're going to create is simply going to make the computer beep. So here we have an action. So when the user clicks that button, we want it to beep. So let's see what we have. When we click the drop down list, here are the different features or the different actions that we can take inside of Access. We can add a menu, apply a filter, beep, cancel an event, we can go down. You can even open a form, open a report, open a table, quit. So there are a whole bunch of options that we can choose from. These are different actions that we can do. So if we just want beep, notice there are no arguments down here. The arguments get shown down here, but whatever you enter in gets shown as a comma separated list of options. And then you have comments. Comments are, why did I put this in here? I highly recommend now that you are a developer, you use those comments to your advantage. So, I want to make computer beep. To run this, if I click run, it says, do you want to save the changes? Sure, why not? And then when I run, it beeps. 